Hey girls and guys, today we'll take a look at Network Services 2, enumerating and exploring more common network services. Task 1, this room is a sequel to the first Network Services room. It will explore a few more common network service vulnerabilities and misconfigurations that you're likely to find in CTFs. Task 2, what is NFS? stands for Network File System and allows a system to share directories and files with others over a network. By using NFS, users and programs can access files on a remote system almost as if they were, they were local files. It does this by mounting all or a portion of a file system on a server. How does NFS work? First, the client will request to mount a directory from a remote host on a local directory just the same way it can mount a physical device. The server checks if the user has permission to mount whatever directory has been requested. It will then return a file handle which uniquely identifies each file and directory that is on the server. If someone wants to access a file using NFS, an RPC call is placed to the NFS daemon on the server. This call takes parameters such as file handle, the name of the file, the user's ID and the group's ID. What runs NFS? Using NFS protocol, you can transfer files between computers running Windows and other non-Windows operating systems such as Linux, Mac OS and Unix. Task 3. Enumerating NFS. What is enumeration? It's defined as a process which establishes an active connection. The requirements requ in order to do more advanced enumeration on the NFS server we're going to need a few tools. One of them is NFS Common. It's an important to have this package installed. It includes programs such as Locked, Stat, Show Mount, etc. You can install NFS Common using sudo apt install NFS Common. It's already provided in the attack box. Port scanning. Same as previous videos in Network Services, we'll be using Nmap and the designer or creator of the room suggests that we use the tags A and P again, mounting NFS shares, using the command sudo mount which has been given to us. Let's begin our Nmap scan using switch capital A hyphen P hyphen T4 for speed, hyphen VV for verbosity, my IP address, and I'm saving the output to the file of my name choice. Let's take a look at the NMAP scan that is completed. Let's see the output. Scroll down can see the different ports that it's picked up already for being open on TCP. The dash VV for verbosity prints out all of this information as the scan runs which makes it a little bit easier to start seeing things before the initial scan complete. You can see different ports again, open SSH, Open TCP, RPC bind. There's seven ports open in total. Questions, there's your answers. Seven, which port contains the service to enumerate? It's 2049, which we have a look over here. It's the NFS one. Open NFS, TCP 2049. Now use user bin show mount hyphen E to list the NFS shares. I'm going to copy this. I've gone ahead and opened up four separate new terminals. In the first one, I'm going to paste or copy in what we just copied. The user is bin show mount hyphen E mount. IP address and there you can see it says home 
I'm going to make a directory temp mount. I'm going to cd into temp mount. Let's mount the home share using the command we were given. Hyphen t nfs to the IP address. Colon home space temp mount space hyphen no lock. Don't forget the space after the home for it to work. Now I'm going to cd out of all of that as you can see. Now I'm going to cd back in to the temp mount and then I'm going to ls and now we see cappuccino. If I cd now into cappuccino and now ls Nothing for Alice LA. Now we can see bash as well as dot SSH as in previous network service videos. So let's cd into the SSH. I'm going to LS and there we see our RDRSA key again. So I'm going to cut this out just to make sure. Yes, it's the same as previous videos. So this is going to follow the same steps or procedures as previous network service videos. Let me clear my screen. Now we need to move the RDRSA to somewhere on our computer. So I'm going to ls again. Now I'm going to move the RDRSA just into my root directory. If I go into a separate new terminal and I ls, now you can see I'm in the root and there's the RDRSA moved over. I'm going to change mod to 600 so we can use this RDSR, RDRSA. Let's SSH in hyphen R RDRSA with the name cappuccino at my IP address. Type yes. And we logged in as Cappuccino. You can see the prompt has changed. If I ls, there's nothing. Just to show the Cappuccino prompt in the front. I'm going to go into a separate terminal now. I'm going to download what we were given in the executable, the wget, a raw script. It's a bash shell executable. I'm using the copy and paste method supplied. I paste it into my clipboard and then I highlight it again. And now right click, select copy. You can close this. Now I can hit right click and paste and hit enter. It's then downloading our bash shell executable. I'm going into this terminal I'm going to cd out of it I'm going to cd back into temp mount cd back into cappuccino and now I'm going to copy tilde forward slash bash space dot If I type ls, we can now see the bash executables present. I'm going to change ownership to root for bash. Change mod plus s for bash. But let's just ls quick la to see for bash. So now you can see the permissions. If I change mod plus s, this is adding in. For the bash and if I hit the ls la bash again there you can see we have now the s bits have been included into the permissions but let's make it executable so I'm going to change the mod 
to plus x for bash which makes this executable and if I ls la again you can now see that the the s bit has been set as well as it being made executable in a separate terminal now I'm going to ls and I can see the rdrsa because that's where we need to be in order to ssh in using hyphen i with the rdrsa the name cappuccino at my IP address and you can see I'm logged in again and if I ls you can now see the bash executable is present in order to run this it's dot forward slash bash space hyphen lowercase p and we have a bash shell if I type ls see bash let's go to cd root and ls and there's a root.txt and let's cat root.txt and there's your flag nfs got pawned see you in part 2 for smtp